I'm in Atlanta <laughs> during lockout and the first time I'm 25 at this time. And, you know, I'm at Magic City and uh, I was on my strip club tour just making my rounds because I had never been in Atlanta before. So we there and I look. So but the Kush is the cologne. So I'm like, oh, like, yo, he really me. And it just changed my whole perspective because I just was like, there's no way these niggas do it. You know what I'm saying? It just really didn't sit in my mind that guys were just getting after it like that. You know what I'm saying? Man. Like I had peeped other people, you know what I mean? Like obviously Stack came out later on down the line and said that he was, you know, but I'm just saying they didn't do it in front of us because it was a trust factor type thing. You know what I mean? But yeah. when I seen it, I was like, oh, I could do it. Cause it, you know what I mean? I yeah. always looked at weed as, a uh, stronger drug than what it was. You feel me? Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, it, it's it's the gateway drug, bro. It's gonna it's gonna you're gonna, gonna lead to the crack and cocaine. I went to high school with kids that would like rather smoke than eat. I went to right. school with kids that just didn't want to go to class at nine a.m. and smoke. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, that's crackhead shit. I would say yeah. that, like, yo, that's that's real. Like that that ain't that ain't what we that ain't. Yeah, what in we college, do. I knew people like that too. That just like but, smoking was. It was entirely too much of a priority. But in retrospect, but, those those people weren't going to go to class anyway. Anyway, they the would have done something else. You're right. That stopped that's that. fair, it wasn't weed, but, they would have done something else. But, that's absolutely but you, I mean, how I was looking at it, these are cats that I went to school with fourth grade with. So it, it just, right. you know, it was kind of like dirty to me because like Compton ain't big. So you're going to go to school with somebody, uncle, auntie, you're going right. to see somebody. And Ooh, I just looked at it like, damn, his lips black as shit. <laughs> Damn, you know what I mean? Like he smelled right. like weed, bro. Get away from me, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like he was better than somebody, but it was like, I know what the consequences of it. If yeah. I get caught, like I'm already taking a chance walking through all these hoods trying to go to school. Yeah. Now I got to deal with the crooked cops. Yeah. And if I smell like weed, they not going to believe a story to say, oh, I was right. just chilling in the car oh. with somebody. Right. It's like, yo, you got a pound in your backpack. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo, I'm a straight A student. I hoop. You know what I'm saying? I only got two classes my senior year. So I'm getting out of school at 10 a.m., bro. Like, I ain't got nothing else to do. I'm hanging out at the school, just chilling. How does that happen? Like, legally, no, you ain't, I, legally, I, you ain't I, got to be there to a certain no, time? Like, I, I just Durham, thought this I had, the same, I had the same thing senior year. It wasn't my whole year. It was like my last semester. So I had English and like, government. And I was only supposed to have English and the best of one of the best pieces of advice my mom gave me was still take a full course load so that you don't go into shock when you get to college and you're taking I, all the classes. Again. I signed up. Yo, y'all was some classes. smart ass. Y'all was some <laughs> smart had, ass. I had PE like three times a week, three, <laughs> three times a day. Like, okay. yeah, oh, sick. PE again. <laughs> so my grandma, my grandma was, uh, I, I think I told her she was Aaron Spelling's uh, housekeeper. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, 90210? Yeah. So they that would always give mansion, me, they would give me they would give me Christmas gifts every year. That was like a mansion um, mansion, like a real mansion. Yeah, yeah. So I would have I was a latchkey kid. Shout out to latchkey kids. Man. I had been walking home since like I was six. Yeah. You feel me? Like back I ain't then. had a babysitter since. And my grandma would be like, lock the door, nobody can come. I'll be home at five. That mm. was it. So I've been having that schedule all my life. Right. And I could probably pull a chick back to the crib if I was on that, but like. I'd be so bored because everybody had class. So That's at real. Compton High, you know, I mean, my best friend at night school, I'm chilling. I'd hop in, I joined sport, certain sports just to stay at school. Right. You know what I'm saying? I remember playing bar football. Bar football ended. I joined the basketball team. Basketball team ended. Track or baseball. My two right. years. So my senior year, I'm, I go to, uh, I had office too because they did the block scheduling. So I had like, I would go to the office, run errands, like make copies for the counselors or whatever. Oh yeah. Ask them if they want McDonald's or something. I come back, <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I have English AP and I have government. And then my homies who weren't as bright or didn't care, I would give them the answers to the tests <laughs> later on in like period seven. Cause I'm like, yo, I want you to be eligible. You know, right. you always got that one nigga that's like, yo, he nice, but he ain't never got no grades. I was a nigga that helped. Is that, is that uh, the kid on, on Power? What's on Probably. Tariq, yeah. It's on, it's not, not Tariq. Tariq. Uh, uh, in the roommate, Zeke. The, the, Zeke. The, the Zeke. Zeke. The dumbest, Zeke. The dumbest yeah. motherfucker so, ever. I helped. They said, uh, hey, they said that nigga dumb for real in real life. <laughs> I, I, lit I literally helped 12 people graduate. Wow. We were Yo, holding. You, um, we you were the real stuff. MVP, bro. Real no, talk. No, I mean, all, all the time, though. Listen. And I know like, I'm, I'm being dead serious, bro, because I'm one of them individuals. I had a two-desk radius. 
I could see two front, two to the side, <laughs> two yeah. behind. Well, I mean, you just got to look at it. If y'all were my friends, I just feel bad. I know how the shit that they was doing at school and how bad it was, impor- how important it was to their parents for them to graduate. Mm-hmm. And seeing, and we had a government teacher, this nigga had, he was so happy to tell niggas they had to graduate in summer. You got summer school. Like, he loved that shit. Like, that's awful. Yeah. So, me, I'm like, bro, I know I'm about to breeze through. Why does that nigga want to work? I don't Why know. Why does that nigga want to work in this? Like, I have no idea. And it was Compton. Like, I know, like, either you don't graduate or you're going to die. Right. I had lost so many people from going to that school in the two years that I went there. Kids was getting killed left and right. And it sucked. So, during that time, my grandma was just like, fuck it. Y'all can come over and I would have study sessions. She would cook dinner make pork chops, fucking box mac and cabbage. And we all there. And I'm like, look, this was on this test. This was on here. This was on here. This was on there. This, this, this. We all passed. That is dope, Trey. I mean, you know, but I knew niggas didn't want to go to college either. At least I was going to give them that because I was out of there as soon as I graduated. Like it was like, all right, yo, because I ain't going to make it if I stay. Right. And I went to Texas Southern. So I went to Houston. Can I I ask you a... um... Oh, so you just gave answers on the test? Like, y'all, did you have any methods? No, I had, I had sheets and stuff, but I was teaching them Shout the out. real habits because my twin uncles, uh, y'all met Ron at the live show. Ron, one of my uncles, was in the NASA program in high school. So he was already, he was like my blueprint to like, yo, go to college, get good grades. You know what I mean? He the one who didn't make it look corny because he taught me everything I know. So like, I just followed that path. Like I got to go to college because Ron make this shit look cool. He got a nice girlfriend. He coming back with shit like clothes and shit. And I'm thinking like, and you know, the movies, the movies in the nineties kind of portrayed that life of like, is this what college going to be like? Right. I don't want to get shot watching higher learning, but right, I don't also right. want to look, I don't want to look at, I remember don't be the menace came out. Right. I was like, okay, this is funny. Right. But like, it was really people not making it coming back home from school. So mm-hmm. I would just stay at school. I would never come home. So I'm in right. Houston, like in the summer, burning the fuck up, homesick, <laughs> no car, can't drink because I'm too young. Niggas country as hell trying to tell me that California ain't shit and we soft. I'm fighting every day. Like it just was bad. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I transferred the next year. Like I was out of there. I couldn't do it. But I was glad I got the HPC. Jerry, before you even say anything, I got the black college experience. I'm not going to go HBCU because <laughs> I know prairie. It's not historical. Cause they know, you know, this is the thing. The, the, and that's the thing I don't like about the whole HBCU push sometimes it's because it's elitism. Sometimes it's like, I went here instead of saying, Hey, hey, hey it's, not just a, it's not just elitism. It's pride. It's, pr- it's, it's school pride, paid, but it's but it, paid but, premium to we are, we are the same Those Harvard. schools are expensive as shit. And I, and, I under, oh, and I understand because I originally yeah. was going to go to Wiley and play ball. The share textbooks and like, yo, bro, we're not doing up. this today, brother. We're not doing this today. That's just not, that's just not happening, bro. That's I'll, not happening. I hope that, I hope that all star money goes to a good place and not to like, oh, wow. <laughs> I'll just all say, all I'm gonna say is, I Jarv, have- I'm not, not, I'm not gonna, not, I'm not gonna, not, cause I, I went to the University of South Carolina, which is a big ass school, but I'm a product of an entire HBCU family. My boyfriend is the only reason my ass didn't go to Spelman or Howard. I regret that shit every day, but whatever. We don't, don't regret not going to Howard. It's cool. You do. I don't, but my whole now. only because, only because <laughs> my mom, my dad, my stepdad, my little sister, and my mom's current boat all went to Howard. So I broke like the family. Wow, that's I a broke lot the of family legacy. That's oh a yeah, it was all Howard. few. Shout out yeah. to you. It was all yeah. her. Like, what are you doing? No, but my mom didn't care. My father really wanted me to go. My stepfather didn't because black college. Black college operations be janky sometimes, burst all's office and stuff. And they lost my paperwork. And he was like, see? No. <laughs> Where's that four million dollars I mean, going, Jerv? That's all I, I mean. Know. Listen, Where's you might have to wait in, wait in the long hey, line uh, for your uh, for your <laughs> refund check. You know what I'm saying? Or you might have to wait in a long line because you forgot to register on time. You know what I mean? Like hey. it's cool. So now you mean that was kind of like peoples. that was kind of like me uh not becoming a kappa. They was just so disgusted in me, the men in the family. They was just like, you're groomed, to, you're groomed to be a noob. But in that's the how south, I build up my mom not being a But in the, but in the south, it was so different. The the yeah. the way they rushed, 
Yeah, Plus, pledging I mean, is very different in the South. It was it was anywhere. way different than what I seen. And I'm actually Fresno. surprised you being from um out west that you actually had Greeks pushing your family. Like oh that. yeah, like, no, nah, they know. Sands. My my cousins and uncles is uh Sands out in at Fresno State. So I'm so I'm I, I was around that. They made me I, know the January fifth, nineteen eleven, hey, and you know, Trey, I, huh? That that must be from the light skinned side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, actually, yeah, one guy. is one is one is jerk complexion and one is dark skin. That's that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. A dark skin noob. I don't think I've ever seen one there, man. Wow, mm. really? I don't, I'm just you're I'm being honest. Yeah, you're I'm honest. And this <laughs> is the point right here where everyone texts me, and be like, "Yo, bro, yo, you just be letting me say all types of wild <laughs> shit." And I'm be like, "Yo, what you want me to do, dog?" Like, hey, man, he's he's in a whole another. You led, you led me. It's crazy. Hey, maybe I'll just need to re-examine your hiring practice. Or your, your not your hiring practices. practices. Okay. Yeah, this guy. Oh, yeah. You don't go out from the HBCU slander to the Greeks to the BGLO slander. No, no, we don't have enough time. We don't have enough time because we got to talk about. Okay. Uh, today, the the day that people are going to be listening to this podcast is March 9th. That's mm -hmm. the the anniversary of Biggie. Uh, oh damn. Being Murdered, yeah. First of all, and before we even start, happy birthday, Kev. Kev the barber? Kev the barber. Remember, he always hey. rants about some girl saying, Oh my god, Biggie died. And he's like, Oh girl, shit, it's yeah. my birthday instead. Shout out to Kev, man. Kev, yo. <laughs> Shout out to Kev. That's that is kind of <laughs> I forgot up, all about that. That's Remember, he was hot. <laughs> yeah, he like, was so mad. Yo, he was my, so mad. My oldest, check this out. My oldest birthday is September 12th. And all we're doing is praying, like, oh, please don't come. Because it happened in the middle of the night. Like, oh, mm -hmm. please just, just make it to 1201. Wow. Because <laughs> a September 11th birthday, like, come on, man. Yeah. It's yeah. ruin for life, you know? Wait, you have a 20 year old? 20 oh, year -old. this is, I'm sorry, this no. September 11th in general. Never mind. In I was general, like, what? Yeah. No, not, no. I got, but, I got a little, okay. Got <laughs> Never so, mind. Not, that would have been terrifying, by the way. Yeah. There's a 20 year old of me in somewhere. I was yeah, bugging, man. but then I was like, Oh, you mean September 11th in general? Could you imagine? Yeah, I have, imagine I have your kids showing up just like, Hi, dad. <laughs> He's what's like, up, nah, I'm not trying to match that shit. What's up, my nigga? And you trying to rekindle right now at this age? Oh, my Watch God. out. I'm cool. In Atlanta. <laughs> It would have been in Atlanta too. <laughs> Little nigga, you pay taxes. Or all -Star now. You get on my face. He's all, he's all country. <laughs> he's got like a draw. Like, fuck oh. this shit, shawty. Oh, like, oh, my God, man. I can't. Oh, my God. I can't. He athletic. Oh. He telling you you ain't shit in interviews. <laughs> yeah, whoever my punk-ass sperm donor is, yeah. he ain't shit. I don't fuck with that nigga no more, man. <laughs> oh, puss ass ho. Oh, puss ass. <laughs> oh. Ooh, y all y'all ought to have so many contingencies of mad people texting y'all. Like, hey, man. Y'all, I'm just here to visit. I ain't got nothing to do with imaginary child. <laughs> <laughs> Grew up going to Greenbrier Mall in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, you're a sicko, man. Shouts to you're A, man. <laughs> Shouts to the A, though, man. Yo, I really and, need... And their really U-Haul parties. I really need a Lysol plane to just fly over Atlanta right now. Like, I just... Uh, I need prayer. I need oil. I need... All, like, what are y'all going to in Atlanta? It's like Atlanta tried to take on the burden of every other city that shut down and just be like, we're going to do all of it right the fuck now here's the worst part my homeboy told me this uh my homeboy marv said you know for a fact someone this weekend caught corona and got pregnant at the same time oh, <laughs> that, on, that's oh, stop it. Stop it. all right man we oh, can, yo, can we, what, just because y'all bought up a landing can we just shout bobby schmurder out real fast yo he's literally the only one that i saw with a mask on that's that because that nigga thing. got out of prison and jail hey. teaches discipline nigga <laughs> hey <laughs> shout him out following the rules bro everybody else is just living i know like, shout out to him he be drinking water when they be offering yep. drinks he ain't violating no paper. pro a nigga was like, y'all ain't gonna get me on that. Nigga. You ain't gonna get me on none of that. Rowdy, so shouts to him. Do good. Rowdy, you too. I had a whole I, conversation with Rowdy literally the day they got popped about keeping that shit off social media. Y'all, y'all, y'all stay, uh, y'all stay up. Yes, please. <laughs> I had a dream that Bobby Schmurder came out with new music. It's what? coming. What? It's coming. Like, it, I mean, went, like it's out and it was he went fire. To too. It was fire. I was like, oh, this nigga been writing the whole time. I mean, either 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 you're gonna catch a brick or or jail made him a doper rapper. We'll see. I like the one skit that they did where they said when he came out and he said, All right, I'm about to make some music. And it was, it was the it sounded like 2014. 
<laughs> and he was like, <laughs> he was like, yeah, man. Hey, you know what? All right. If you don't like this, let's get Fetty Wap on this. And they're like, yo, it's <laughs> was, oh, poor Fetty, man. Like, yeah, no, Fetty's dope. Fetty? Shouts shout, shout to Fetty, man. Cause uh, my man, Ye Ali helped, uh, you know, pan up with some new stuff for him. So where it's sounding pretty good. Out, where is Fetty? I can talk about Fetty Wap. He just dropped the album. Not too long ago, like three oh, weeks really? ago. Oh, really? Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not bad. All right. New sound. I say March. I just say March 9th, the uh, the anniversary of <laughs> Biggie Smalls passing away, uh, getting murdered in L.A. So we decided we were gonna watch the the documentary that just came out on Netflix last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Biggie Smalls. I got a story to tell, and it was man, Jerv, you weren't lying. Jerv was the one that was really pushing it. I was blown away because again. What were we talking about the other day? We were just like, how did they have all this footage? D-Rock was literally about, just carrying a camera so, around. So we were talking about Hip Hop Uncovered in general. Hip Hop Uncovered, yeah. We're, when we were watching Hip Hop Uncovered, Naima, we were just staggered by how much of this stuff was on tape or yep. had photos and stuff. And these people kept this stuff through the years. And so we watched this and it's, it's, it's basically the same thing. D-Rock was walking around with a camcorder the whole time. So but what y'all had the... the what y'all should know, sorry to interrupt you, but what you should yeah. know is like that in that that as soon as camcorders were small enough to carry around, like Freaknik, Beach Weekends, yeah, party weekends, there was always like that dudes used to walk down the street. I remember the last essence before Katrina, I literally saw like some guys walking guys walking down the street with camcorders and I was like, Oh God, Essence is about to go the way of Freaknik. And then Katrina happened, so not, but that was the thing. So there was always somebody well, in the crew. I mean, that's, with a camera. that's, that's Teddy Riley. All I want to do is zoom, zoom, zoom in upon me. Mm-hmm, right? Like mm-hmm. that's the, the camcorder being more portable, accessible, et cetera. I remember, by the yeah. way, going to Freaknik, wanting to rent the, a camcorder because we couldn't afford one. And the only camcorder we could afford was the big joint that had like a that looked like you were seeing the news. <laughs> so we walked, hey, we went and we, we got a microphone and pretended like we were. The shit wasn't even connected. It was just like, <laughs> oh yeah, we're here in the streets of Freak Nick and we want to see if you go drop it low for us. Like, <laughs> this shit was so dumb. But wow. again, the the level of just and and it's not just that. Like, obviously they that they had a very rich catalog there, but Biggie at thirteen, like mm-hmm. with a his voice ain't even broke from puberty, um, and the photographs, and then also, I won't lie, like. Names that you've heard throughout the years, like, oh, that's Seagutter. Mm-hmm. Oh, that that's oh, oh like th- these names that we'd heard, but we just I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know who right. any of these people were. So those are the two things. Also, one last huge observation for me was I had no idea little C's was that short. Oh, I knew that from the time. <laughs> that's why they casted him so fucking the little movie. in the movie. But in the movie, I yeah. thought it was just the most disrespectful thing ever. Oh, they got no. A child. <laughs> no. They got a child to play little season. Like, no, he's he's Stop literally it. like maybe like five three, I think, something like that. Uh, I mean, yeah. I was terrified by how short he was. Oh, that's him. Oh, God. He's little. I, I mean, hey, child's just short people, bro. Um, I I was kind of blown away about seeing, oh, I remember being 11. And hearing, man, my man, oh, you know, when we gonna get on, my man, oh, and you know, he just got moked out. Like I used to repeat that skit before the, the interlude before the song start, right? I think it was missing, uh, missing you, right? You. That shit bang too, by the way. Na-na-na-na-na. But just to hear like how 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 you know pretty much how O was in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like he was the one that really believed in big, his family was really in there. You know what I'm saying? And obviously a tragedy night with his uncle and, you know, in the store and shit. But like, it was crazy to like hear these names that we've kind of heard in the past 20 years. And now it's faces. It's like, okay, that's that person. That's that person. And by the way, Names that we had heard. I didn't know about Uncle Dave back in, in Jamaica. Shout to Uncle Dave, bro. Uncle Dave with his bright yellow shirt and the bright Dave yellow Wallace. shoes. Dave Wallace. My son Dave. My, <laughs> my son Dave Wallace had the wildest Jamaican fit ever. Like it was. Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he, 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 you know what I'm saying? Tell me I'm Jamaican without saying I'm Jamaican. That's, <laughs> that's who Uncle Dave was, bro. Like for real. I was, um, um, I was skeptical just about the existence of this, right? Because I was like, what? about big story don't we know um or at least about his career story because big his career was 
considering the outsized impact that it's had, his career was really short. Two studio albums. And he wasn't like Pac where he banked a bunch of stuff, which is why we didn't have like a whole bunch of posthumous releases. We've heard yeah, we've heard everything there is. Yeah, we've heard At least every 45. Yeah, well, true. But thanks to Mr. C, we've heard everything. We've heard every lyric. We've heard every bar. We've heard every whatever. Um, so I wasn't sure what else there was to say. But this is perfect because I feel like what isn't talked about big enough is Christopher Wallace, big the person. Yeah. Um, and people who knew him would tell you, like, he was incredibly charismatic. He was funny. He was witty. Um, really, intelligent, which you can tell just from his rhymes. But people would always talk about, like, the kind of personality he had, right? And now you finally know more about that. And also about how long he worked at this craft. Like, now we got rappers who be like, no, nah, I don't even really rap for real. I just did this. Like, they didn't have a rhyme book. Like, they didn't have, you know, like, they weren't practicing. They just do it. No bars, just vibes type shit. The fact and, that this nigga could have been a jazz musician, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? His rhyme patterns were based off of the shit this jazz musician on his block was showing. Which up. is crazy. That's nuts. And which is skill, like crazy skill. So I appreciate that this was actually a new look at Big because we don't, I feel like there are some artists that we just beat their stories to death. But I, you, you being an insider, you like you're intimately uh, uh, familiar with this this industry and and specifically and um, i'm bad boy I'm, alum yeah right yeah did you know this stuff not all of it no not the kid. Some, i definitely didn't know that, i didn't know about the jazz know? artists um I, I know d rock i had never seen see in my life um i didn't know a lot about family back in jamaica um most of what I knew about Big started from when Big got in the game. I didn't know a whole lot about. I knew I knew Big's block. I knew his neighborhood. I knew people over there. I knew that stuff. But um, yeah, I didn't really know Big's story before getting signed. I didn't know that like that. It's 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 funny to me because we've had so many kind of docu series that have come out over the years. We have. Uh, he had the, the bio biopic uh notorious that came out and you're right now you every time something like that will come out it's like yeah i kind of knew all this already yeah it's you're just you're just doing the same it's like when they did spider-man movies and it was the same goddamn spider-man movie he gets bit by a spider he wrestles his uncle ben <laughs> dies right. he decides uh, you know great power great responsibility i'm like give me the other shit right and, right and so watching it from the very beginning, you know, like, this is something that we haven't seen. And right. even little things like just seeing them in their natural element, right? Yes. When 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 uh, D-Rock comes in and Big's talking about, man, we just smoked the biggest blunt ever. I, I mean, it's just, it's so down to earth of, yeah. a, of an interaction. Yeah, it was so genuine and, and also him being in the moment of like not being too cool for shit. It was like... You know, because everybody has a persona to pursue and, and the stuff that mostly people try to carry. We got the most innocent raw footage. And I think if he would have been on this earth, he probably wouldn't have been what people have tried to make him out to be. I don't even think Big would have kept rapping much longer. I think Big was transitioning in his mind. And I think and I've heard from people who were close to him that Big was transitioning to the business model. Right. Like. He was he was um, looking at his exit from Bad Boy. He was looking at Caesar's debut, um, which really was an L. Like losing big, we lost Caesar's whole career um, on the low because they were working on his album and he was lost supposed to be pen. up next. And the yeah. fact that he was the pen to write all of niggas' rhymes and get them paid. Yeah, Seriously. yeah. All the um, all the nasty shit that Lil Kim used to say. This nigga wrote. <laughs> right. I mean, well, she, well, the first album, then she started. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then she got better. Yeah. But like, he was, you know, he, he was looking more <laughs> at like what he was going to do with Adidas and um, Clothing Line, Brooklyn, like, like all that stuff was in the planning already. Right. So I really don't even think that, or maybe he would have retired like Jay and come back. But like, I get, I get really upset when people talk about like, Jay is only as big as he is because Big's not here. I mean, granted, Big left a space for for Brooklyn for somebody to put Brooklyn on their back like that. But I don't, I don't 
I still think that Big would have had his own path. And I I don't think it would have been like to continue the way we think. I think Big would have been a label head. I think Big would, you know what I mean? Like, I think Big would have been the businessman. Naima, how surprised were you that we didn't hear from Hove, which I guess isn't that surprising, but we didn't hear from Buster either or Kim. Not, not obviously not from not from their professional experiences together, right. given that these were characters from this time period. And we really we saw Kim, right? But we didn't really hear from her at all. And then we didn't even see the mother two. Not very. I felt like um I felt like this was really supposed to be more about like not just the people who knew big, but the people who like were Thank damn you. their family for for big right this was not supposed to be the big the rapper story and i think that's what's important that it wasn't it was about big the person yeah it was the origins of big yeah it's, it's but, origin saying, but, but those cats were there that's what i'm saying like Buster was. yeah but i'm I mean, when, like, when you look at the of, like street life you look at the person yeah. who funded who who like like you know was I mean? at his high school but they weren't like boys you know what i'm saying like him and Jay, yeah, it wasn't, they were there ish. They weren't, they were in like, they were there, meaning they were all in similar spaces at the same time, but that's they like weren't if integral. Hove came out, they weren't integral to the story. That's like if Hove came out, was like, oh, that's my best friend. You know what I mean? And was going right. hard and was like overtelling stories. Like, oh, you I mean, know what I mean? It would be a I little mean, different. But Jay, and, but Jay and Big didn't even, but Jay and Big didn't even really, the first time Jay and Big were even met, even met each other were when they did, um, uh, Brooklyn's finest, finest. yeah, yeah. they had never even met each other before then, so that's what I'm saying. They were around, mm, gotcha. but they weren't like, yeah, they weren't tight like that. That's, that's, they that's, weren't yeah. tight like that, yeah. It's like us being in the same space with another podcast, and they're like, Oh, don't y'all know them? Y'all supposed to know them, we like, no, nah. you know what I'm saying? Like, Clark told this amazing story on Jay's birthday on Clubhouse about how he had to finagle that studio session because both of them wanted to the, because he, he made the track for Jay, big hearted, big wanted the track. Dame and Jay were like, why should we put him on our shit? Big was like, why should I be on their shit? Because he was wow. one who was like, y'all do it together. And Big came in the studio and saw, and Jay just like went in, laid his bar this down, left space for Big, but like didn't write nothing, didn't do nothing. And Big was like, what the fuck? What the fuck just happened? And Clark said that was the day Big stopped writing that day. Like wow, after, since that, he because saw, he, saw, he that. saw Jay do it, yeah, because he's seen somebody one. That's and, wild. And he said Clark had been Clark said I've been telling him forever, but you have to see this dude and how he, you have to see him in action. And Big was like, did he just lay his joints down? Like what was that? And he said it actually took Big a minute to get back to him with his bars because he left the session and was like, I'm a, I'm again one him. take hove. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, hey. But Big had the better verses on that track, though. Yeah, yeah, just, <laughs> That's a nice parlor trick, sir. Hey, but. Take, take your time and go ahead and get smoked. Yeah. All right. But look, here's one thing that I just discovered today. I guess the day before he died, March 8th, he went to go see Donnie Brasco. Mm. He recorded Victory, All About the Benjamins. Oh, man. And the next day he dies. Damn. Wow. And also, he went to a tattoo parlor on Sunset with Lil C's, and he saw Shaq there, and Shaq and Uncle Jerome, and Shaq said, hey, man, what's going on? Not much. What's going on with you? What y'all getting into tonight? We going to that bi party. And Shaq said, don't do that. And according to Shaq, the rest is history. Imagine <laughs> being warned not to go to a bi party. Like, that sounds so crazy in 2021. Like, the bi party might be the shit to get you set up. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a different era. I mean, that's the same as the source and all that <laughs> shit, though. Like, but vibe I, was supposed to be the sexy shit. The source vibe was, was like, vibes yeah. a grown up. Vibe that's was like vibe grown was up. A, yeah, yeah, vibe was a vibe was night. A, sexy if you twenty five and older, put your hands up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you wearing some socks. Put your hands up. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying in that particular yeah. area, though. Like, ain't you know, ain't nobody safe in that shit, bro. Because that shit is still right there. Yo, when y'all like, I mean, I know we all know how old he was when he died and whatever, right? But but it feels think, different now. Yeah, like when you hear it every single time, no matter when when it happens, like it's always just like, damn, he was like he, he was, was super baby. duper young. Yeah, bro, baby. I'm gonna tell you what what really tripped me out when I sat back and I did the math and realized that I'm almost exactly his mom's age when, when he died. Got shot. Wow. Like, forget about what have I accomplished at 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 his age. 
yeah. at her age, I'm like, oh shit. Like, so it's, it's, it's staggering him and Pac, man. Like yeah. he died so young, but because they re, I mean, man, I, even I, I can't even say what I'm about to say. I can't even, cause the Pac was prolific, big. Naima just said it. his career really was like three, four years. Yeah. I but, mean, think about, I mean, and, and I would even argue Big's impact is stronger than Pac's. Like, I'm not going to say Pac didn't have influence, but Big's rhyme style, because Pac didn't have a signature style. Like, I mean, he did, but he didn't. Big, you could, with my enemies? <laughs> you could dis- dissect. Big was like a master class in wordplay, yes. in flow, yes. in like, yes. in storytelling. Like, there's so much there. Tell and him. then, even with that, when Sermons you think about, on Mondays now or Tuesdays now. <laughs> but even with that, when you think of how young he is, right? But this level, I can I can still listen to big shit and hear something I didn't hear before. I'm gonna say my nigga Pac Catch was on, like, some, on some gear rich quick skit. No, Pac man, I think that Pac was just getting increasingly angrier or more disconnected over the course of his career. Like you can hear it in his album. Well, that, but and then he because he had that fear, that mortality. Yeah. Shortness of mortality. Pac he was, was that. way more driven to make more. Yeah. Because he knew I ain't going to be around to make this. And volume does not always equal quality. And so that's why. Well, also, I think Shook Knight locked him really in the studio and was like, nigga, keep recording. I think there was also that. <laughs> I think that was also a factor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just but, saying. Uh, no, it, like, you got out was, of jail and went to the studio. Um, but, I, but Naima, the only thing I'll push back on you is that in those first five to seven years after Pac died, the number of copycat from image fucking ja rule how you how your rhyme style you know, like it was so many it was ja rule 50 yeah. took some of that Lil wayne remember little zane Lil yeah wayne, like oh not Lil zane not little zane uh, yeah, but, 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 calling me was hard bro but did they really <laughs> but i mean the reason i say it with big is because did they really did it really transform i mean big guy permanently big guy gorilla like, black well, uh, no, but no, that's that's just a guy that sounds yeah, like, yeah, just sound like, yeah. like but yeah, like, yeah. but like for big, I would say, well, first of all, I keep saying this listen to Jay Z pre volume one. You mean uh, when he was rapping like Foo Snickens? Not that far back, you don't have to go that far back, but you could, you could listen <laughs> like to like Hawaiian Sophie. Oh, Hawaiian, 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 Hawaiian no, no, Sophie. No, no. no, we're not <laughs> going that far back, though. We just, we just stay in musical doubt volume I'm one. Just saying. That was a nasty hove. I only like okay, my hove. What do you think? The difference between reasonable doubt and volume one, you think he got slicker between reasonable doubt and volume one? I think, I think the the imp, the influence of Biggie definitely bled in, in the same way that Biggie, by the way, but Nick was already out song, when Jay dropped reasonable doubt. No. Host I flow know, is host flow is definitely saying, a slightly different in, in on volume one. It definitely he slows he slows it down a little so, bit more so than he did for reasonable doubt. Slows it down, You're right? And it's a lot more because, it was, because the reason was out. And it, and by the way, okay. And I was gonna say reasonable doubt is is rather drug luxurious, right? Big, I think I feel like I mean I could be wrong, but I feel like Big made that transition on life after death where it became less drug glorious and it was more just this luxury life. Well, that wasn't just now. big. We well, went from I'm, mafioso, but, we went from the mafioso era to the bling era. That no, era. Right. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm just I'm saying not, the same thing with Hove after that yeah. on Vine well, One was the same way to me as well. I wasn't I wasn't talking about content. I was talking about um more like the flow. And and okay. big did it too, because if you listen to there are tracks on Ready to Die. What big voices, man? High pitch and all that. They got heavier. Then, That's real. And he gained then weight. To all the ladies in the place yeah. with he gained, style and grace. Yeah. He gained but weight. Hove did the <laughs> same thing. Right. That's what I'm telling you. If you listen to like 22 twos, if you listen to uh, mm. almost every track on that first album, I love them, but there's definitely a difference between that and then you belong to the city. The way he. Yeah. he, he like gained weight is a great way to put it, Naima. Yeah. It's it's slower, it's heavier. Well, I it's meant big, more. literally gain weight, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, but um, <laughs> because you can tell his breathing, his breathing is different in the, in the flow of everything. But um, no, I agree with that. They slowed down. You could say it could be a a few different things. I think it's hard to really point to direct influence when that was actually an art that the whole game was taking. You know what I mean in terms of like that change. 
And I will say that reasonable doubt was more conversational, but I also feel like you said, like Big's flow on ready to die versus life after death is different. His his he's coming from a different place. I feel like the difference with both of those is like on life on ready to die, Big's hungry, and on life after death, he made it right. Like you're on different sides of the game a little bit. Do okay. Let me ask you guys this this question because I always wonder this if this is just me being old or if I'm truly hearing something that's there. I always felt like there are a bunch of Biggie songs that if they came out today, if you didn't, if you had never heard, have you guys ever seen the movie Yesterday? No. It's a movie. Oh, where the Beatles a, don't exist. Yeah, where the Beatles don't exist except this one dude is like, what do you mean you don't know where the Beatles are? And so. He's like a failed singer, so then he starts singing Beatles songs, mm -hmm. and he's like, uh, "What's my man? The the not Sam Smith, the other British uh, <laughs> singer. You guys know what I'm talking about. Shape, I'm in love with the shape of you. Oh, da, 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 da. Ed, uh, Ed Sheeran. Ed, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> so he's touring with Ed Sheeran, mm -hmm. and he's just like, "Hey, let me try this new song," and he'll drop a Beatles song, and Ed Sheeran is like, "That's the greatest songwriter of all time," right? Like, so even on a contemporary style, people are all recognizing the genius of the music. If that happened, a hip hop version of that, and people had never heard of Biggie, and then someone just dropped this guy's music, would we sound here as a, this sounds so dated from the 90s? No. Or do you think people would legit like, oh shit? No, I don't think so. Because um, niggas bleed is crazy right now. I'll take, if I heard a niggas bleed in 2021, I'm, Throwing my fucking hat like Bobby Smurder in the air, nigga. <laughs> that shit yeah. crazy, nigga. The way he could tell us, sound old. the way he could, yeah, I can't fuck with Ready to Die. Ready I think it's raw. Know. I think it's raw, but it ain't. It don't. It ain't like what it would. It's painting a picture, like he said, when he first seen what Dre and Snoop and them was doing in the West and then got boys in the hood and men's mm -hmm. society to paint that, he went and wanted to show what the block was like over here in Bed-Stuy and, 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 and Bushwick and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So overall, trying to hear that now, since we already see it. I think you also had to separate like the production and the lyrics. So like if somebody took the lyrics- There you go. And still, and his flow, I think absolutely it was still right. Because it was still cut through everything right now. So I think about Victory. Like, that's that's a track you said he recorded the day before he died or whatever. If Victory came out now, in the commission, you asked for permission to hit him. Or he would get love. Like me hitting while wifey. He would get winning. love. Or or, 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 or or what's the one with the the... Got lawyers watching lawyers, so I won't go broke. I think that like notorious. Kick, I think, that, I that, think that kick in the door. We never referenced that notorious because that's nah. the remix. We're not talking about that. Oh, okay. Um, but I think like I think I think the lyrics from kicking the door could still go. I think who shot you still, could still go. Yeah. I think um I mean who shot you is one of the grimiest, most epic fucking oh my god like it's just. Nasheem, I love you for that. But it's like, I think some of Big's like really raw shit could still go. The up tempos might be in question. Yeah. Um, the party joints, I think I got a story to tell could still rock though, because it's oh, just yeah. it's genius. It's story. You don't think more money, more money, more problems with with, with I still don't forgive yeah, that. I still I don't, don't forgive so. that nigga big for saying the okay. next game was rained out though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's him being funny though. Right. right. I, I guess. He had to no, make it work. That, that's him. That's no, it funny. I, I don't mean, know. I guess that shit was rained out or something. You know, bro. Yeah, yeah that's that ain't nothing but just that's yeah. niggas talking shit. That shit talking. It is. Yeah, it is like, shit talking. Man. It was over some shit like I don't even watch sports, my nigga. I'll just rob uh, niggas. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. the other I watch thing sports, happened, my nigga. I just rob niggas, and this nigga six five something. <laughs> They they figured out it was Anthony Mason. R.I.P. to Anthony Mason. But apparently, that, apparently it was Shout, supposed to, to be Anthony Mason, but it wasn't a real whatever. But it yeah, wasn't a real it was I used to think it was Allen so, Houston, but everyone I mean, thought it was Allen Houston. Everyone, everyone, thought everyone thought it was someone Allen Houston. Everyone thought it was Allen Houston. Yo, can like, you Allen can Houston you imagine that? Like, if you're Allen Houston, no. you hearing everyone have this rumor about no. you, dude, you got to be I'm like, done. damn, am I that? Like, how what's do you wrong with no. that? But Jerb, the other thing also is that this dude is like the most religious guy in the world. Like, this is oh, <laughs> so it's just like it's just a situation. I can't imagine Allen Houston being in that situation. Yeah. So. But I, don't anyways, wanna, see, I don't even want to see Allen Houston get robbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, Shout no. out to Allen Houston. 
the other big thing that we watched this week was something that social media had me believe in. Oh, this is great. They're all back together. And then I watched it and I said, God damn you influencers. It was, of course, coming to America on Amazon Prime. I'm going to tell you all right now, man. The first red flag for me, the absolute first red flag was when I hit play and it said PG-13. Yep. Dead giveaway. Yep. Dead giveaway. Yep. <laughs> you are Bro, not heard, that hurt my heart when I saw that. Hey, before the movie even started, I saw PG-13. And so I said, I'm going gonna, no. I'm I'm to get into all that. I'm going to explain why. Are Go you ahead. allowed oh. to? Are you allowed to? I don't want to get you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to just say, I'm going to just say this for PG 13. The reason why PG 13 was a thing was because they wanted to bridge the gap. The generation gap. The generation and, and gap. Also, I, did, I could see to, that in the movie. It was supposed to through. be, a, it was supposed to be a theater release. That's the other thing. Yes. PG 13 yes. for the theater Bruh. releases is how they make the money. PG 13 movies gross higher than, than I'm not Earth. taking yeah. my family. I didn't, I wouldn't have taken my family. I mean, your daughter's not old enough anyway, though, but I'm just saying if His you had, a, if you, when you, you one no, I'm talking about Eddie's daughter. Oh no, know. but I'm just saying like, if, if Jerb was taking like a, his 13 year old daughter and he says, okay, I seen this 30 years ago and I want to, yes. you know, pretty much cause it's 32 years old. I so, can see that. And I, and I could see that. I almost could tell too much that part of the goal of the movie was to kind of make it a newer. It's almost like they want to make a new version of coming to America, right? It's no, a didn't. sequel. No, they didn't. No, but hear me so out. No, I mean, didn't. hear me out while I say that. It was a sequel, but it was a sequel that it mirrored the exact same plot of the first one, just in reverse, right? And it also tried to hit it didn't just recall the great moments of the first one. It tried to recreate all the great moments of the first one. And that actually was what strained it was that it didn't feel like it was enough to just flashback to recall mention. But when you try to actually recreate the, like if you're a comedian, you can't recreate the bit, you know what I'm saying? Like the joke is the joke. So like when you're trying to recreate it, update it, do whatever, um, and, and put it on fleek and shit. Even if you make it an inside joke in the movie, it still is like, you end up with a product where it's like, it's not quite hip enough for a younger generation of viewer, but it's also doing too much for like the original viewer. So that was what was kind of challenging about it. So to me, if they had tried to remake it, I, I would have, they did try to remake it, first of all. You're right. But if they had tried to remake it with the same spirit, meaning, the first one was irreverent and push boundaries and we're going to do it all over again. I would be fine. The problem is they try to make the Disneyland version and the Disneyland version means a, everything is, I said like in the first 10 minutes of the original coming to America, he gets called a dumb fuck by a cab driver. And then three minutes later, he turns to 70 and says, what is a dumb fuck? And in this one, not only do they not have an F bomb in the entire movie, even though PG 13 allows you one F bomb, there's one that happens in the gag reel that happens after the movie because someone messed Wait. up a line and said, ah, and they bleeped it out. I'm like, you couldn't even give us that one. And, the movie, and, and it was, and it was Morgan Freeman. of all. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like, oh. So, so here's the thing. Right. Here's here, here are the ma- major problems, right? You can recreate, you could try to recreate bits, but make the joke. It felt like they had a bunch of things in their head. Like, wouldn't it be cool if we tried this? And, and and that's what the movie was. And that's why you get, that's why you get, watch this. So that's why you get things like, there's a musical number every five fucking minutes. I don't remember there being a million musical numbers in the original Coming to America. I remember when- the, There were the, musical references, but there yes. were not musical numbers oh, per se. So time, like you had the Soul Glow theme, you had the TV yeah. Love theme. But like had Soul Glow, the other thing is, think about, okay, who would be the villain in- Original coming America. I mean, it's Daryl, but not really. Darryl. There's not a real villain per se. That was the but, other thing about this that made it like high drama. There's a villain. But if you if you if you make Daryl the villain because he's an asshole throughout the entire movie, right? He's never redeemed. He's an asshole. But Daryl, everyone that they encountered in that movie, other than the Zamundans, was a normal person, right? Like right. Cleo McDowell, a little like quirky, but 
he's 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 the kind of guy that you would actually meet. And right. the guys in the barbershop are exactly is a very accurate barbershop kind of depiction. And the guys at the at the you know Randy Watson and the preacher mm-hmm. are reminiscent. In fact, the preacher is based on an actual preacher that Arsenio. And, but they but they are a little bit. I I want to say, but well, no, they're they're a little bit. Uh, parodies is the wrong word. They're a little bit like sketch comedy versions yes. of these people, right? Sure. Because sure. because that's one thing somebody said. Like, well, these characters are so over the top, and I know they were everybody more, was over the top. I know they were more over the top than the original, but the original really was. Um, it was caricatures of like these characters that we all know, right? But but, but there was. I think one of the things was now it because there's been so much time for coming to America to age. And I argue that coming to America, um, the color purple and like Friday are three of the most quoted black movies that we have. Like there's so much from all three of those movies is in our lexicon. Like what is that? Yes. Velvet or aha or sex with chocolate or that boy good or it sounds so beautiful. Don't you agree? Like there's so much. Right. Um, the invention and, of the mic drop, by the way. Yes. The, the mic one. drop. Randy Watson and the mic drop like. There's so much there that I think that that the bevy of writers, because that's part of the problem, like so many people handled the script over time and it kept getting shifted around. Um, wherever it landed, people kept too much in mind, not just what were the the main heartbeats of the movie, but what are the things people most quote or laugh at or whatever which is two different things so it's like instead of instead of focusing on the major points or heartbeats of the first movie that made it what it was there was too much focus on what is what are the quotables from the first movie right how how do we redo those it's all a caricature it's a caricature of that movie rather than a remaking but my point was naima is like wesley's character is over the top leslie jones is over the top tracy morgan is over the top the, Leslie the kid, was too much. Everyone was too much. There was nobody who just kind of played their their zone. Also, there were also we, too many characters we had to pay attention to. Too many to, right? characters. We have all the characters enough, from the first one. Not enough of have, the originals. Right. So we have all the characters from the first one, except well, we don't have the mom, and then obviously King Joffrey dies early. But right. like then we have like okay, so the first movie, the the people we had to actually pay attention to were Sammy. Akeem, Lisa, and Daryl, and Patrice, and Mr. Yeah. McDowell. Like, that yeah. was kind of it, right? Everybody and then, and else then, was background. Yeah. And, yes. and and then, like, the, the king and the queen, but those to a lesser yeah. extent. Everybody yeah. else was background. Right. There were too many people here in the foreground, right? Yes. Like, we had, the story was about him and Lisa, and it's about the kids, and it's about the son, and then you got these other queens characters, and it is too many, it just felt very crowded. But I, in saying all of that, I didn't go in. Anybody who came in expecting this to be like, I'm, I guess I'm kind of surprised that the criticism is fair. I'm kind of surprised I'm, at like a shocking criticism because like, I'm, what do you think it was? Gonna, it's meant to be I'm a nostalgia critical, play. I'm not critical because I watched it and I was disappointed. I'm critical right. and maybe this is my fault. But all these people who got the advanced screeners Mm-hmm. All sucked its dick. Like, oh my god, they're back! Oh my god! And I'm, I'm whoa, whoa. I want to know what that Trey has what dropped y'all off watching? when he says this. Nah, no. <laughs> Yo, I'm just like, I want to yes, know that he, he, he definitely would have made Trey's that clear real here. fast. <laughs> I'm right. just saying, what were y'all watching? Because I didn't, I didn't laugh. I laughed. You didn't, a few you didn't laugh at all. I laughed a few laughed. times. I didn't laugh as much as I will laugh even now at the original. I laughed. I'm I definitely laughed a few times. I laughed harder in the gag reel when mm-hmm. the kid is holding the the whiskers. He said, like, "Oh, he's like, I got whiskers. some whiskers." And, and Eddie's Eddie, like, "That's my thing." Yeah. But Eddie, but it's not even like Eddie. It's the weirdest thing because, like you said, this is one of the most quoted movies of all time. Right. And part of it, or well, even though that's not part of the movie, that's from from his stand up. But part of me was I, I really felt very warm and fuzzy at seeing Eddie recognize his, his own material. Shit. Yeah. And then the other part was the realization. Did that motherfucker do it on purpose? 
or right. has it just been to the point where Eddie's shit is just so powerful? You do it and you don't even know you're doing Eddie's shit. Right, right. And, and right. that, uh, I won't lie, I wanted the second part to be more true. I wanted him to just be like, yeah, like, oh, I got the whiskers, da da da. And like, Eddie, like, wait a second. You're... That's my shit. I love that moment, shit. though. I wish that, like, oh, cool. it was like, that's my thing. Yeah, like, that was, yeah. That was cool. That, yeah. that was I, legitimately, I felt good watching that. Right. But for most of it, I'm just like, I mean, like, even, I don't know, man. I just, uh, they, for instance, if we're going to do the whole, is, shouldn't the daughter be the queen or whatever? I'm going to be honest. We didn't really need two more daughters. <laughs> the, and the two other daughters, A, they didn't do shit. They didn't B, do shit. No, like, don't do that to them. They, they, yo, they, they didn't come and save the day during the rumble. They helped, but that was their sole purpose. They didn't really talk. They didn't have a whole lot to say. Yeah. And I felt like the ages were off for how long Lisa oh, and Akeem yeah. have been married. I was like, they've been married 30 year, 31 years. Why These kids should be grown is, by now, yeah. Yeah, why is there a, a nine-year-old? Like, what the fuck is that? You know? Well, so, clearly, uh, clearly, clearly, that was a liquored up night. And then... It's, like... But I'm not talking about, here, and also, another. like, has Lisa never gone back to New York? Because I was almost like, has Lisa never gone back? Like, she so, never went home? But I, I'm sorry I lost y'all sure. earlier. I'm going to chime in. That's okay, this. because Amin was talking shit about it. I know I'm pretty sure. Here it is. He was. He Here's really the thing. Won. I give the movie an eight, <laughs> an 8 out of 10, right? 8? And, Here's the thing. See, I liked it, bro, but not an eight out of ten. No, nah, here's the eight. thing. And uh, listen, I'm gonna give the writer, I'm gonna give the team the benefit of the doubt. It's 32 years, and you turn in water into wine. People have been begging for a sequel for no, they haven't. We haven't. Nobody's I mean, been begging. We all, we all said it was perfect. Don't ruin it. Right. I mean, to an ex, to an extent. Sorry, it was, I love it. Was, it was, I mean, I look, I personally I'm, I'm I was too young to watch it the first time. And I've seen it and I love the original, but I'm just saying on where they were going with it. I didn't love the overall casting, but I understood the direction that they were trying to go. Right. I didn't love the son. I thought he was corny as shit. Yeah, I was like, um, super corny. They could have somebody but, better than that. But I'm not going to shit on comic view. I'm not going to shit on that black man Bruh. and be anti-black. I mean, respect everybody's to his black career. in this movie. Everybody's <laughs> black. We is good, bro. We, <laughs> no, we, no, 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 this, I, this family. No, I'm at the red it's, table. It, it, no, I'm it was a it waste is. of Tracy Morgan, and it was doing too much with because Tracy can be so much funnier. You, than that. you know who I wanted to see more of? I thought we have a bigger role. Well, no. First of all, anyone I wanted way Arsenio. more. I, want, I wanted more Arsenio. I wanted more John Amos. I wanted more of the originals to have just more of a role than just a couple. Just, hey, yeah. remember this? So here's the thing. But, but like, I was on. mad. But Garcelle maybe, Bouvier maybe, was still hold there. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay, there's sorry. one person, one new character that I thought when I heard he was going to be in it. And when I saw him on the screen, like, oh, he's about to kill this. Wesley Snipes. Rotimi. Oh, Rotimi. No. Because, no, I'm telling nah, you. Nah, bro. He didn't need to be in that shit. No, not in that role. But in general, this is a, a huge waste of a dude who's talented, who's, who's Nigerian, right? Can do the accent, can do all, like the, the kind of the, the quote unquote funny African. Michael Blackson too, but Rotimi. I thought they like, would I mean, use more of Tiana too, to be honest. I was disappointed when nah, she did just, the whatever I, you want shit. She was fine. I mean, here's the thing about the <laughs> about the new act. act. I like her. Again, it fits in the same role. This is supposed to take place in 2020, right? So you're still trying to adapt with the 2020 audience. It's like when Jordans come out and you say, fuck, man, like, why did they make it that color? Right? It was good as it is, you right? You know what? No, but 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 Trey, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back on that only because so like I took the movie. What you missed was me saying I took the movie for what it was. So I wasn't disappointed with it. I laughed a few times. It could have been stronger. I think I would have been more disappointed. Oh, look at the baby! Had I gone to see this in theaters, then I would have been like, okay, I'm annoyed. Seeing it at home was fine. But when you look at like Bad Boys for Life, I was like, we do not need another Bad Boys. We do not need to shit 17 years after the last one came out. We absolutely don't. But it was really well done. And the reason it was really well done is because they aged everybody up appropriately and they called back to what we love about the other bad boys while still like advancing Marcus and, 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 and Mike, like their relationship and everything, the dynamic. And I, that's what I feel like was missing here we didn't get enough of the characters the essence of the characters and there were too many people for us to follow like 
the first one was a real development of a love story between Akeem and Lisa, right? Like we yes. saw the arc. This one is like, they done had a love couple of heart to hearts and this nigga like, actually I want to marry you because you want to open a, so like I just didn't and, and enough to like run to the States and do all this other shit. I didn't believe them. I believed Akeem and Lisa in a, in a movie that was like a, a, a almost damn near a parody sketch. But I didn't believe them. Right. And I wanted to see, I would, and if we were going to do a Kim and Lisa, let's see more of how they develop. Like we, like everybody, people, everybody was underutilized except Eddie and the fucking, and Leslie who was overutilized and the kid who played the son. Everybody else was not used enough. Hallelujah. Amen. To show up. I, I like, Garza, like why is Garcia Bouvier still a flower girl? It's been 30 years. She ain't got something else, other shit to do. <laughs> why? Why is Vanessa Bell Calloway still barking to happen on my foot? Why? She's on, like, she's on, she was in a spell. I know, but these are things that they didn't have to continue this way. You could have yeah. incorporated. I mean, that. like, look, I understand. I understand the disdain. I'm just trying to, you know. Protect make, your make, check. I'm not mad. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because the, listen, the check's still clear. So I ain't tripping. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is, is look, I'm just trying to paint the picture of why and why yeah. and why I'm not going to try to change anybody's mind about it. In the same way I tweeted about it, I said, look, this is what we did. All right. I don't give a fuck what y'all think about it. You can hate it or love it. I personally enjoyed it. And that's all I'm saying about it because I'm trying to explain it. And yeah. even when I would like kind of tease a little bit, I'm like, look, People was wondering what these characters are up to. The reason why it wasn't John Amos. John Amos could barely fucking walk. Yeah. He, and you could like tell. The, you could tell it was don't a have, they Don't have his ass. Or, they or don't have his ass in or the movie. Don't have this whole shit being about they have the McFlurry. We have the Mc. Like that was a whole I'm shit. Like John and I'm Bossa Nova. Yeah. Like <laughs> can I boss it over? Yes. Give me yes. a boss and over. Come on, McDonald's. <laughs> Rob, you got me. All right. So. Right. Gotcha. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Then, then, and wear black. Okay. I, re, I rescind I, my statement yes. about. Me too. The utilization of John. Me too. Based <laughs> Me too. On okay. Information we were given in the Boston. Oh. I'm, gl I'm glad. I'm glad. You, you should, if you're listening, you're like, oh, I want to know. Trust me. You should be glad too that they kept it in. But yeah. that, that doesn't explain, again, like Naima said, the underutilization of characters that. We really like, and the overexposure of, of people whose characters weren't really well fleshed out. And I think the most important part, Naima, is what you said. The love story between Lisa and uh, Akeem is such a slow burn in the first one, where she starts with she doesn't even notice him, and then she knows him, and she's just being friendly as girls do to to guys because you know you never know. And then, and then he proves his value, and other Daryl proves that he's a jerk. And right. all the things kind of line up. And by the end of the movie, they fall in love. And in this one, like I said, she she did the nigga's hair one time and he fell in love. Yeah, it's like they had three conversations and all of a sudden he's I mean, like, y'all, I'm trying to marry you. Man. He was pretty trash too, by the way. Like he was just kind of- love. The nigga was 30. Listen, he was 30. He ain't really a mountain nothing. He ain't know who his daddy was. He definitely was not acting like a 30 year old. I know. Listen, nah, I think that I, I will say- He definitely it was, was like 18, it was, poorly, it was poorly cast in that situation. Oh my God. I but, forgot he was supposed to be that old. Shit. Yeah, but yeah, again, you had to look at it in a scenario of what they're- tr I, I, I try to understand the, 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 the trajectory of who's next in Hollywood, right? Cause he was in sorry to bother you and then he's in yeah, this he and he's going to be in something else. And I tried to, when, when I got a chance to look at the script, I'm like, Hmm, who the fuck is this? <laughs> but, Trey, but Trey, he was inconsistent. I'm going to I'm gonna gonna say this. Show. I'm going to say this. If his, if the writing was tighter, maybe he could have done a better job. I, I agree I, with I that because there were some moments that I really thought, Oh, his timing is really good. Like there were right. moments where I was like, He's good. His flow is good. His time when, good when Tiana time. Taylor walks in and he's just mm -hmm. turning and looks at like he Eddie and Eddie's like shit. he killed yeah. that shit. Yeah. Right. There but were moments like, where he was really good. So he had the capacity. Also, for, also fellow New Yorkers. How would you feel how he portrayed as a New Yorker coming to Zamunda? He didn't. First of all, he did not feel like a New Yorker to me. Oh, he um, just felt like random. That, just a random. Yeah. He, he's, he's basically he's me like, in New York. The Midwest or some shit. He's, like he's even, New York, yeah, even Leslie, true. who is a New Yorker, 
almost didn't feel like i don't know right. it was weird um i do think that the fish out of waterness was really extreme right like we like who doesn't know what caviar is like you know what I mean? that was just, that was just a lot of the, the black mashed potatoes yeah there was a lot of the fish out of water especially Nerf. in the age of the internet in the age of you know afrobeat in the age of fucking you know by the way that's the other thing had, I, every, everybody everybody doing a more... don't touch uh challenge at the beginning of the damn pandemic i'm sorry go ahead no 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 that's that's a great point i wanted more when they're in zamunda why are they playing all this? It's gonna sound fucked up. American R&B. music, like why? And not even like why is Salt and Pepper here? Who the fuck asked for Salt and Pepper? Y'all know Africans hate coming to America, right? Like they hate it. No, no African right here. First of all, okay, Second, you're <laughs> an American African. But no, 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 no. I'm telling you, all I'm about um, Africans who just all my family con- who came, they they love it. They fucking love it because okay, maybe it's, it's West African. Maybe it is West Africans because I'm telling you, like every we fucking love that movie. We, in Sudan, I watched it in Sudan the first time. Mm-hmm. I watched it on tape in Sudan, and we're like, "Oh my god, this is." So or maybe crazy. it's younger Africa because I've heard. So I've had to explain to people often about coming to America that when the movie came out, we had literally first of all we had not seen the continent portrayed on screen often outside of. The damn um, Tarzan, Sally, what's her name? The feed the kids. That was one funny thing from fucking um, Tracy. Where he was like, "For five cents a day, I'll fucking take care of you." But when we had all those commercials all the time, with like the right. starving kids, and your parents would be like, "Eat all your dinner because there's hungry kids in Africa." Like yeah. that. That was really like the entire '80s was that right? And roots. Like so, to see for the first time a movie that's centered on people from the continent um, and like modern day African royalty and not just like the old African royalty that was on like the Budweiser calendars that we got for Black History Month or just whatever we got from, but like modern African royalty to see the continent is like wealthy and beautiful and colorful. Like we didn't, that was so big then, even though, and he made it theatrical on purpose, Mm -hmm. right? Because he wanted it to feel ceremonial and regal and lush and all of that. But it wasn't cartoonish though. It wasn't cartoonish. So and you're right. This kind of took it to a really extra, like the midnight train place. from the midnight train from the moon to, it's silly. Know, it's very, silly. It's yeah, silly. It, like, it turned it silly. Also, so shouts to Rick Ross lending his house. Oh my God. So, but, no, that's crazy. No, that's, he didn't lend his house. The ball he did not room, lend his house. The bedroom. Are he Rick's did not house. lend his house. Yeah. They bought. They rented it. Yeah, they, they rented. No, it. hold on. They ball rented the bedroom it down. And 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 decorated that it. niggas in the movie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good. Yeah, I mean, your house is like, yo, y'all it, need my house? Go ahead. It was a good move. It was a good pay move me for him and though. Have me in the movie. That's not lending my house. That's called quid pro quo. All right, called, so clear profile. What are y'all gonna do for me? Am I gonna be in the movie? Are y'all Ooh. gonna pay me for my house? I'm nah, sure man, that I'm he not, ain't say all I'm that. I'm not giving that. I'm not giving that nigga credit for that shit. <laughs> for him, to be, <laughs> but, I'm not giving that nigga credit. Why and, I'm they flex, left, and they left the bedroom designed as it is. They left a um the dining room. It wasn't the ballroom. It was the hallway or the entryway. He's the got bedroom. a nice house. The dining room. Yeah. That's all I give him. You got a nice house, bro. Shout out to you, have a police. You have a police. Hey, because it was Evander's house first. Yeah, shout out to him. They should have put Evander Holyfield too. in the movie. Rick Ross probably said no. They probably wanted to. Rick Ross was like, no. Wow, <laughs> the Rick Ross hate is. Yeah, I didn't see this yeah. coming. No, I'm just, no, because I hear so <laughs> many people like, oh my God, Rick Ross was so gracious. He's not gracious. Speaking no, they of definitely paid him a grip. Hey, speaking oh, yeah, of they put him in a movie. They speaking of old ass movie. movies, New Jack City turned 30 today. Okay, hold hold that one, hold that one, because we got to wrap, and we'll do we'll do we'll do overtime. We'll talk New Jack City, and we'll talk Snowfall. All right, man, I'm done. I'm done giving people credit for shit that they got uh, compensated for. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do, because Snowfall had another episode. We got to recap that, and New Jack City uh, turned thirty, and we all obviously have to talk about that seminal thing. They both have great tie-ins, so we're gonna head to overtime. If you are a Patreon. Go ahead and check it out, patreon.com slash count the things and listen to us talk about those two topics. If you're not, why are you wasting time? Just sign up, get up in that. All right. 
Get up in that. Yeah, up in the up in the Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Look, I've been drinking now. You must stop. Okay. Crazy. I'm in Miami. I'm, just saying. I'm in Miami. <laughs> I'm burping. I, I'm not, I'm having a hard time keeping it together. But this has been Black Opinions Matter. That explains the Rick Ross hate. There it is. Okay.